All together, the last stanza. Ye sons and daughters of the East, remain standing for prayer. Almighty God, our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee, O Lord, for Thy grace and Thy mercies in our lives, for sending Thy only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, and Thou hast accepted what He has done for us by raising Him from the dead for our justification. And we thank Thee, Father, for this 43rd commencement service of the Far Eastern Bible College, as well as the ordination of preacher Clement Chu. May thou be pleased to bless every item of this evening hour of praise, thanksgiving, and worship. May all these items redound to the glory of thy blessed and holy name. Cleanse us and wash us of all our sins by the blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of our Savior be highly exalted and magnified and may the name of God Almighty be glorified. For this we ask with thanksgiving in the most blessed and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
for the reading of the Scriptures, let us turn to John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 to 16. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 16. Jesus said these words, and I read, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no man can ye, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask, what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. The Lord bless the reading of his sacred word. The Far Eastern Bible College is now 56 years old by the grace and mercy of God. We have over 900 graduates in 37 countries, and many are doing well for the Lord in their respective places of calling for it. For example, I just received an email from Li Chunjing. Well, she graduated last year with her Bachelor of Religious Education. She hails from mainland China, and now she's back teaching in 
a Christian school in Nanjing and conducting Bible classes in house churches over there. And another one is our honored speaker tonight, the Reverend Kentoro Lee, who is pastor of Calvary Batam Bible Presbyterian Church. And Reverend Lee and I matriculated at the same time back in 1985 at FEBC. And he graduated with his BTH, and later on he came back for further studies. He also earned his Master's of Religious Education in 1998, and then later on the Master of Divinity in 2005. And when he came back for studies, I was already a lecturer at FEBC. Well, he was my classmate back in 1985, and then he had to return for his studies. So from classmate, he became a student and studying under his classmate. So he is a very humble man to come back for his studies. And we thank the Lord for how the Lord had used him in Batam as a pastor. And now we are very thankful he is here with us tonight to give us God's word. And how we thank the Lord tonight also we can witness an ordination, the ordination of preacher Clement Chu. Clement also graduated from FEBC with an MDiv and a THM, and he has passed his ordination exams and will be ordained a minister of the gospel afterwards. Clement is Hebrew tutor at FEBC, and he serves at Tabernacle Bible Presbyterian Church. Tonight, we also rejoice with the 33 graduates. They have worked very hard. They have persevered. And now they have completed their studies. And I want to make special mention of Professor Patria Solidum. She is retired professor of Central Mindanao University in the Philippines. And she had served as advisor to the Christian Students Fellowship in the university. And she was a very diligent student, pursuing her certificate of religious knowledge through FEBC's online classes and courses. And so she's very humble to study God's word although a university professor, yet pursuing the knowledge of God's Word. I think she sets a very good example for us and all our certificate students here as well. Despite holding full-time jobs, families to take care of, uh, they took time and effort to study at FEBC, either in the night classes or the online classes. And they have taken many years to fulfill all their credits, and that's no small achievement. It takes a whole lot of discipline and diligence and hard work. So I salute all of you. And I pray all our students also, those who are lay students, you come and take the classes. I would encourage you don't just take the classes for audit, take the classes for credit. For faith without works is dead, right? So, and please don't think that it is insurmountable. Studies are not easy. Studies are hard in FEBC. But with God's help, you can do it. As our late founding principal, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Toh says, Self-help with God's help is the best help. And so you see a group of them now graduating and will be awarded their well-earned certificates. 
And we thank the Lord and praise the Lord also for the others graduating with their diplomas and those who will be conferred their degrees. And I pray that after the graduation, you will not stop studying. You must continue to study. I like the way the Americans call their graduation ceremonies. They don't call it graduation, they call it commencement. And that's correct. You begin, you are just starting out. And may you continue to study God's word and not stop. For studying is a lifelong endeavor. Insofar as we who are Christians are concerned, we must never stop studying God's word. How we need the wisdom that comes from God's word. And the wisdom that comes from God's word is infinite. And there's so much more to learn and to know and to study. And also we pray you also will be serving the Lord very faithfully. And as again our late founding principal, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Toe, he tells all of us, not only must we serve the Lord without conditions, there is no retirement in ministry. You don't retire. You serve the Lord, you preach until your last breath, until the Lord calls you home. So it's a lifelong commitment. And we thank the Lord for how the Lord used the Reverend Dr. Timothy Toe to found the FEBC way back in 1962 when the college opened its doors. And I remember him telling us when the college first started, the buildings were all up. The church sanctuary, the live church sanctuary, and the annex block, which is FEBC, were all up, spanking new buildings with all the dormitories and the classrooms. And in the very start of the semester, on the first day of prayer, he was the principal and the lecturer with three students. And he told the students, welcome into the hall of majestic emptiness. Because all the buildings are up, classrooms, dormitories, but no furniture. And he recounted to us in those days, yes, not one stick of furniture. But our good God has provided not only in the past, he has provided throughout the life of FEBC, even today. Indeed, our, our God is our good shepherd, and he is our provider. God is very faithful. Don't ever doubt his faithfulness, and don't ever doubt his power. He keeps his promises. And so, in the very first day of prayer, our late principal quoted from Psalm 34, verse 10, to encourage the students. And Mrs. Toh then was one of those three students. Mrs. Ivy Toh, of course, now is our matron and teaching elementary Greek. And she always reminds us how Reverend Toh quoted this verse in Psalm 34, verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. The Lord is indeed true to his promise. So we want to thank the Lord, and also we want to thank the Lord for all those who love the college and who has given generously to the college Please continue to pray for FEBC. That the Lord would continue to protect the Far Eastern Bible College and to preserve the good and sound biblical theological heritage on which this college is based. And the theme verse for FEBC is from Titus chapter 1, verse 9. Holding fast 
the faithful word. The word is always faithful as the Lord Jesus Christ. The living word does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So is the written word, the Holy Scriptures. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever infallible and inerrant. And that's our faith and our conviction. And how we thank the Lord that because we take this good and strong stand for the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Lord is pleased to bless FEBC and all our students and all our graduates and all those who love and support this college. We do see His good hand upon us. So in this graduation service, we give Him all glory and honour and we truly come here with a joyful and thankful heart for how the Lord has blessed us, have used us for the extension of His kingdom and to the glory of His name. And so according to tradition, and it's a good tradition, board and faculty will now take the Dean Bergen Oath So I ask the directors and all faculty to now stand, stand where you are. We'll take the Dean Bergen oath right now. Please raise your right hand. The Dean Bergen oath is found at the back of your bulletin. You may want to follow with us. The Dean Bergen oath, I swear in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that I believe the Bible is none other than the voice of him that sitteth upon the throne. Every book of it, every chapter of it, every verse of it, every word of it, every syllable of it, every letter of it, is the direct utterance of the Most High. The Bible is none other than the Word of God, not some part of it more, some part of it less, but all alike the utterance of him that sitteth upon the throne, faultless, unerring, supreme. So help me God. Amen. Please be seated. And now we have the Reverend Kentoro Lee to give us God's word, the call to, to pray and to evangelize. I thank the Lord for this opportunity to come and speak to the graduates and to the members of this congregation. Now the topic for this evening is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 16. And I titled this message as the call to pray and to evangelize. So there are two things we're going to talk about. There's about prayer and then about evangelism. So first of all, to the graduates, I would like to congratulate you. And indeed, this evening is a happy occasion. That after the many years of study, now you are ready to enter into the full-time ministry. The Apostle Paul, as he supervised the pastor Timothy, after many years of watching how the churches grow and the servants serve him, he has something to tell Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, he says, but watch thou in 
all things, and dear affection, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. Now, in this one verse, there are four instructions that the Apostle Paul was given to Timothy. But for our purpose this evening, I want you to take note of the two instructions, the two from the back. Now, because these two instructions are related to what you are supposed to do, what you are required to do in the full-time ministry. Now, now you see the last instruction from the back. It says, make full proof of thy ministry. Now, what is the meaning of making full proof of thy ministry? Now, simply it means that you have to carry out the ministry of God that he has entrusted to him, to you, completely. So the key word is completely. Make full proof of your ministry. You will have to do the work, the ministry, completely. You are to be a very responsible worker and to discharge all the work you are assigned to and faithfully performing all your duties and nothing left undone. Now, this is the meaning of make full proof of thy ministry. Now, as a Christian full-time minister or full-time worker in the church, we just have to keep the standard that the Apostle Paul has given to Timothy. Make full proof of thy ministry. So I have to take note of this thing. But what I'm going to say to you this evening is not about this part, but it's another instruction. The Apostle Paul Timothy, he says, you have to do the work of an evangelist. Now, why am I choosing this topic for this graduation message? Now, in the... Just now, Dr. Kuo mentioned we entered FEBC in 1985. So it's already 33 years. Now, from my personal experience and from what we observe, that we in the full-time ministry There is one thing I want you to consider. And maybe we really have to improve on these things. That is the instruction to all the full-time workers to do the work of the evangelist. What it means that you have to do evangelism. So it is not enough for us to do so well in the church work, it's also not enough for us just to feed the flock with the teaching of God's word. And it's not enough that if we are able to plan the program of the church so well and execute all the program efficiently. All these things are considered part of the make full proof of your ministry. And we must come to the understanding that the nature of our ministry is not only this part. There is another part to it. That is the work of an evangelist, to do evangelism. Now, evangelism is in the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the task that he particularly instructed his disciples to carry out. Now, the message for this occasion of your graduation is to draw from the verse that the Lord Jesus Christ taught his disciples before he was going to, to the cross. In this one verse, he explained to you that the Lord Jesus, he himself, 
has appointed you to do evangelism. So evangelism is not a sidekick, you know. Evangelism is not something that not important that we want to do if there is a time to do, if we have the heart to do. Evangelism is a thing that the Lord Jesus Christ purposefully and carefully instructed that the disciples have to carry out. But he did not only give us this instruction. He did not only say that we must go and do evangelism. But the Lord Jesus Christ also gave us a promise that he will help us. He will help us to save souls effectively. So with this promise of the Lord Jesus Christ, we that in the full-time ministry, we can be strong, we can always be ready and spiritually fit to share the gospel. And when you preach the gospel, sinners will be convicted and they will be too repentant. Now, so this is the thing we want to consider this evening. Two points only. Yeah? The appointment of the Lord for you to go and do evangelism. And secondly, the promise of God to you that he will help you if you only you want to pray. He will help you to do this evangelism effectively and you will be able to save souls. And these people that come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will continue for their life as true Christians. Now, now we look at this verse 15, uh, John 15, verse 16. You see, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And the first thing we want to consider in this book is that what is the meaning of fruit here? Now, John chapter 15 has many references to the word fruit. But if you study this passage carefully, there are two meanings of the word fruit here. Now, verses 2 to 8 speaks six times the word fruit. And six times the word fruit mentioned all are in the context of bearing fruit in relation to abiding in Christ. And abiding in Christ here is evidenced by the keeping of his word. The idea here is that you can only bear fruit if you are living out God's word. Now, so the fruit here is something internal in the life of a Christian. It is the positive changes that happen in response to God's words. Now, so in other words, from verse 2 to 6, six times the word fruits mentioned there, the fruits there means our changes because of the word. Now, so it is something to do with ourselves and nothing to do with other people. But when we come to verse 16, the fruit there has another meaning. It has something to do with your, his appointments, God's appointment to you, to a duty. Yeah. That it has nothing to do with his response to God's word. Now, let me explain. Now, how do we know that in verse 16, the word there, the word fruits there, no more, talk about our changes, our internal response to God's word. But it's talking about something else. And what is this fruit means in verse 16? Now, interpreting this verse will decide, will confirm our explanation that the Lord Jesus Christ has appointed you to do evangelism. Now, so, when the Lord Jesus says, I have chosen and ordained you, yeah, actually, what does he mean? Yeah. You are chosen and ordained to do what? Yeah. Ordained here 
we we'll explain first the word ordain here means to establish, yeah, to order by appointment. So ordain here is not the same with ordination that we're going to see later. But ordain here simply means that you are appointed. So the Lord Jesus says, He has chosen you and ordained you. It means that He chose you and then decided and then appointed you to go and bring forth fruit. Now, John Calvin gives us this explanation. What is the meaning of fruit here? Now, in his commentary, he says, in the verse 16, he says that the subject now in hand, in verse 16, is not about the ordinary election of believers, yeah? by which they are adopted to be the children of God, but that special election by which he set apart his disciples to the office of preaching the gospel. Now, what John Calvin means is this. In verse 16, when he says, God chose you, it's not about choose you for salvation, but he chose you to the office of preaching the gospel. The Lord Jesus Christ in verse 16 is saying, he chose you and appointed you to go and do the work of the gospel, to go and share and to preach the gospel. Ah. With this explanation from John Calvin, that the appointment is to preaching the gospel, then we can come to the clear conclusion that the fruit in this context has to refer to new converts, new believers. Now, so this is the part about the meaning of the text. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ has chosen you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Then we ask the question, what does this fruit mean? The Lord Jesus Christ chose me and appointed me to bear fruit. Bear what fruit? Now, the fruit is not the same with the sixth time mentioned from verse 2 to 8. But the fruit in chapter 16 clearly means new converts because your appointment is to go and preach the gospel. Now, so clearly established, John 15, 16 is talking about evangelism and salvation of new converts. Now, I hope that with this we have established clearly that in chapters 15, verse 16, there is truly an uh, appointment for the full-time ministers, full-time workers to go and preach the gospel, yeah, to share the gospels and to bear fruit. That is to win souls. That is to bring in new converts. Do you know why, why I want to emphasize so much on these things? Because I want to get into the head of all the new, the, all the students. They are going into the full-time ministry. You have to bear in mind, besides doing all the so many church works, we still have to remind, remind ourselves. There's another thing that we must never forget, that we must do. This is the, what the Lord has appointed us. He has decided that we must do. That is for you to go out and share the Gospels and to bring in new converts. So how do we go about doing this evangelism? In the church, we conduct what we call gospel rally. The members bring in their friends, bring their loved ones. Then, through the gospel, we save souls. That is one of the way we bear fruit. Yeah, that is one of the way we do evangelism. On Sunday, we have people coming in. New visitors come to the church. And then usually in the preaching or the message, that the preacher will, will see yeah, in what way we can also bring in the gospel, add in the gospel. Yeah. So 
new people that come to the church. Yeah, they also get to hear the gospel. And from time to time, we also have people that come to believe in the Lord. So through Sunday preaching, we also do evangelism and gain new converts. Now, this is something we have been doing. I'm very clear, everybody is doing, and we also think, as we enter into the Christian ministry, are these things what I do? Yeah, we're going to conduct gospel meeting. Yeah, then in the preaching, we're putting the gospel. So last time I have a friend in FBC also. He was a lecturer last time. So he has his preaching outline here. He will put a cross here. You know, put a cross. Then he circle it to remind himself. Yeah, if there's opportunity, if there's a way, then he will say something about the gospel. The purpose is that some new visitors, they might hear the gospel and they also believe. Now, so this way of doing evangelism is something we have been doing. But the question is this. My question for you, the graduates, is this. Now, considering that the Lord Jesus purposefully and emphatically told the disciples, that he had chosen them and appointed them to do evangelism. It's not a casual remark, you know. But he purposely take the time, take the effort, and tell them, I have chosen you, not you chose me. Now I have ordained you. I have appointed you to go and do evangelism, go and bear fruits, go and win souls. If the Lord Jesus Christ has speak so emphatically, now we have to ask ourselves, if my way of doing evangelism is simply conducting a gospel rally once in a while in the church, in a year, and adding some gospel message in my Sunday preaching, they question that, is it enough? Ah, you have to think. Because you've got to enter into the ministry. You have to think. Is this enough? that to fulfill what the Lord so required of me, just to have a gospel meeting and to on Sunday preaching, I add on, if opportunity arises, if the message in, in one way or another permit me to talk about the gospel, is it enough I only preach the gospel in these two opportunities and occasions? And also, sometimes we have to ask ourselves also. Actually, on Sunday, how many new visitors do we have? Uh, if you think in this way, how many new visitors do we have in our church? On Sunday, how many new non-Christians come into our church? How many of them? And they will have gospel meeting once in a while. And if we do not do anything else, evangelistic speaking, do we do enough yeah, to meet the requirement of the Lord Jesus Christ who have decided and appointed us to save souls? You think about it. Now, I really pray that as you enter into the ministry, you will have this conviction, convicted in your heart, that I need to do more than just the usual gospel meeting, one or twice in a year. If you are convicted now, that is true that the Lord Jesus Christ has given me this appointment and I must do evangelism. Then when you are entered into the ministry, you will only put your heart and spend your time to do evangelism. But if you are not convicted, then when you think about evangelism, you will only do, okay, we have decided that in this year, maybe in September, we are going to have a gospel meeting. And then you think, that is evangelism that I have to do. You think about this. Now, so beside gospel meeting and Sunday messages, what are other means 
you can go and reach out to the lost souls. These are things I believe you have known. But let me repeat it again so you put attention to it. Personal evangelism to loved ones and friends of church members. You see, you always think, okay, I have to go out and I want to do evangelism. People always think I could meet, meet new people. You know? Meeting new people and to share the gospel to them is something very, very difficult. Some people say I'm going to go out and then to distribute gospel tracts, right? Then you think this do evangelism. Now, we understand there are testimonies that people, because the gospel tract, they come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is, but I tell you, it's not effective. Because why? You can give out 1,000 tracts and you do have one person come to the church. You try it, you go and trace it out. In my FEBC days, I have lecturers, they are very keen in evangelism. From time to time, he will wake us up at 5 o'clock. But each one of us will carry one bag, you know, plastic bag of tracks. They will go to Topayo bus station. Then we give. Whoever pass, we give until the whole plastic bag finish. Then we make a turn, then we see all the track down the floor. Then next week I ask my pastor, teacher, anybody come or not? Sometimes you say, yeah, maybe one or two. Maybe from the gospel track. Maybe they come by themselves, also not so sure. So I'm not saying that you cannot do gospel track thing. No, huh? I, don't, I don't say that. But to be effective, if you really want to earn souls now, get people in. You have to do personal evangelism. But don't think first that I must go out, no? go to Orchard Road, go to everywhere. They see new people that try, try to talk to him. It's very difficult. There's another way easier. We've got so many members of the church. Every member has their loved ones, their relatives, and their friends. Get the church member to introduce you to their family members and to their friends. Get a church member to do his job. By this personal introduction, it's much easier for you to make an appointment to visit and then to share the gospel. And because it has been introduced to him, it's very easy, I should say, easier for you to share the gospel to the person that you're going to see. Yeah. So I will say, when the Lord is saying, he wants you to do evangelism, you must go out and do personal evangelism. Only later on, when your heart are all full of fire, of fire no? because you see souls are saved, then you really want to do more, you want to save more souls. Only then you go and go to the streets, yeah, go to the house estates, go and knock the door, go and greet the strangers, and they say the gospel. But that part let left it later on. Yeah. Do the easy one first. Yeah. By introduction of the church members. Yeah. Have you ever thought that this is the thing you want to do? Very soon you will get your degree. Officially you graduated. And some of you we are going to the ministry. And you might have a lot of idea, you know. What am I going to do after this? In the church, in the church, also always in the church. But do you really ever think that one of the things that I must do, indispensable, is to go out and do this evangelism? I must go and save souls. Another way I want to suggest to you that you can work on this issue is that using the social media. Yeah? We are in this century with some other advantage. You know, if, if some of you are not happy with Facebook, you don't blame me. 
Okay, but I want to say we can make use of this platform. Now, Facebook is the most powerful platform nowadays in terms of human interaction. And then most of the Christians, they have this Facebook account to interact mainly with friends. But have you ever thought that we can use this for evangelism? No. So I have two accounts. One is for my friends. One is for the Chinese people in Batam. Because I feel as a pastor, my circle of friends are mostly Christians. I have some kind of lost touch with the Chinese in general. My work doesn't relate to them, so I do not get to know them. But I want to get to know them. Without getting to know them, we cannot share the gospel with them. So I set up an account specifically to aid the Chinese in Batam. Christian who aid, I will not, re I will not accept. I will not confirm. Only the non-Christian Chinese. And I hope, you no, know, by making friends with them, yeah, sometimes comment a bit what they are doing, liking them a bit. Now, sometimes post some gospel verses, encouragement. There's some, maybe gospel meeting, Christmas, we post an invitation. And this is also one of the ways that we can do yeah, to reach out to save some souls. Okay. Another thing that the Lord Jesus said about fruit bearing is that your fruit should remain. You know, He said you must go and bear fruit. Then He said your fruit must remain. What does it mean? It means that these new converts will remain as believers. These people that have come to believe through your sharing of the gospel, they will not turn apostate. They will continue to believe to the end of their, of their life. But the key, the key to have this kind of convert is in the content of your gospel sharing and the conviction of the Holy Spirit. If you say the wrong thing in evangelism, if you tell them not the true gospel, although they can come to the church and they profess they want to become believers, but they will not remain. One day, they will go away because there's no genuine repentance in their hearts. So if you preach the prosperity gospel, if you preach the gospel of miraculous healing, they may come for a while and get baptized, but the fruits will not remain because there's no genuine repentance, no salvation. One day, they will leave. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, I appoint you to go and bear fruits and your fruits remain. So you must remember, you have to say and preach the true and the full gospel to the new people. Now, another thing, the Lord Jesus Christ says, He will help you in your ministry of evangelism. The second part of Verse 16. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is the promise of answered prayer. But the context here means this promise of answered prayer is in relation to your work of evangelism. So what it means that the Lord Jesus promised that the Father will answer your prayer when you ask him for help so that you can do the work of evangelism. He will answer your prayer so that when you speak to people, these people will be convicted and they will repent. So in a way, there is a promise of the Lord Jesus for you that go into the full-time ministry that your work of evangelism will be effective. You will not go and invent. You will bear fruits. Yeah. So the first way Now, John Calvin also say about this verse, he says that the meaning of this verse has to do with that my father will have his hand straight out to assist you, yeah, to assist you whenever you pray to him in my name to grant you assistance. So I hope it's very clear. Yeah? There is a promise for you that the father will help you in this work of evangelism. 
I was briefly mentioned, the question is this. If the Lord has a promise for us to help us in doing evangelism, why is it that we have difficulty in doing evangelism? Why is it that we sometimes seldom or hardly ever want to go out and do evangelism? Why is it so? And why is it also that when we share the gospel to the people, the people just have no response and they do not want to believe? Why is it so? The problem is that we do not ask for the Lord's help. And what must we ask the Lord's help? What kind of help we must ask from the Lord? Two things. Firstly, it's for yourself. Do you know why? Full time people sometimes do not go out to share the gospel. Can we say that we do not know that we are supposed to do evangelism? I don't think we can say that. If we cannot say that, then why are we not going out? Two reasons. Firstly, it's because it's like what the Apostle Paul says. Our mind is full of the world things. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, the Apostle Paul said, As a warrior, you should not be entangled with the affairs of this world. What he means that if our mind is full with the problem of our daily life, that will dampen our spirit of evangelism. Because you have to spend your time, your mental, your energy to think about the problem that you are facing, you have no desire to go and do evangelism. So the secret here is that you must pray that the Lord will help you not to entangle yourself with the worldly affairs. And secondly, I would like to you to know, the reason that you do not go out to do evangelism, very possibly, is because of sin. If you are living in sin, you enjoy sin, you have no desire to do evangelism. If you do sin, if you live in sin, then you want to go to do evangelism, you will feel very shameful, feel yourself not worthy. That's why also one of the reasons that you will not go out to do evangelism. That's why you must ask the help of the Lord that he will help you to free yourself from all these worldly affairs, free yourself from all these sinful things. And lastly, the Holy Spirit will help you in your ministry of preaching the gospel in that he will convict, he will convict the people that you spoke to. Now, the Spirit is given to reprove people of sin, of righteousness, yeah, and of judgment. So we must pray that the Lord Jesus, the Holy, the Lord, the Father, will send the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to convict the heart of the people they were talking to. So they will truly repent of their sin, and the fear of judgment to come. And they will know that they are, they are sinful. They need yeah, the riches of the Lord Jesus Christ to save them and to redeem them. Now, so basically what I want to tell you this evening are only two things. You are called to serve in the preaching of the gospel. Do evangelism. And so that in order you can go and do evangelism, you must be fit. So you must ask God help, God's help for you not to live in sin, not to entangle yourself with worldly affairs. So you are free, spiritually fit. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you, yeah, to convict the sinners. So they, upon hearing the gospel message, they will respond and believe in God Jesus Christ. So I believe this message is very simple and very practical. And I do hope you will pay attention and then say, is this the thing that you want to do in your ministry? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray that the Lord will forgive and cleanse us from all our sins and then give us the spirit of evangelism, that we are truly go and share the Gospels and bring many people into their kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
let us not forget the important word that we have heard just now. And as stated, it's a two-point sermon. And to remember, just remember the cross. The cross has two strokes, the horizontal and the vertical. We are all called to preach, to evangelize. And that is the horizontal stroke. Reach out to others with the good news. But our evangelism, our preaching can never be successful without God's help. And therefore, we need to pray. And that is the vertical stroke. And you pray to the Lord and He will help us. So remember these two points. I want to thank the Reverend Kentoro Lee for giving to us this word. Now the award of certificates and conferment of degrees. I just want you to take note that in the list of 34 graduates over here, uh, there is a typo, there is a mistake, and we apologize, I apologize for this. Leanne Joy Joseph will be graduating with the Master of Religious Education, right? not the Master of Divinity. So please take note of this. I'll ask the academic dean to assist me in the award and conferment of degrees. Awarded the Certificate of Religious Knowledge, Beng Ting Ho. <laughs> Fu Xiu Wei Cecilia. <laughs> Kwa Lai Huat Harry. Kaylin Lok Chi Yen. <laughs> Patria Paris Solidum. <laughs> Tim Yap Ming En. Awarded the Certificate of Biblical Studies, Ao Choi Fong. <laughs> Gan Ken En Samuel. <laughs> Lim Lian Bo Michael. Yong Swan Rui. <laughs> Awarded the Diploma in Theology, Qin Xian Lian. <laughs> Peck Hao Xian Vincent. Tan Boon Khoi. <laughs> Conferred the Bachelor of Religious Education, Si Moon Hun. Van Bawi Ho.
conferred the Bachelor of Theology, Charyon Shanta Rosa Sinaga. Dedi Krishno Manalu. Maritas. Mega Tuti Mawarniat Zega. <laughs> Muniwati Mendurfa. Van Tong Hap. <laughs> Confer the Master of Religious Education, Q Kai Sin Catherine. Nguyen Van Hu. <laughs> Su Xiaoxian in absentia. Zhu Qin Kai. Leanne Joy Joseph. <laughs> Confer the Master of Divinity, Chen Yu Jing. Chung Sin Chun. <laughs> Fu Chen. Joseph Robert Samuel Vijay Yaraj Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Sebastian. <laughs> Tan Pek Swan Shemain. Conferred the Master of Theology, Zhou Jianwei, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Cheong Jin Ming, Cum Laude. Now we have the ordination of Clement Chiu Yi Ming. Now to call upon Clement to come to the front and stand before me.
humble yourself. <laughs> okay, answer these questions. Do you believe the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the divinely inspired and preserved Word of God, the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the Westminster Confession of Faith as containing the system of doctrine taught in the Holy Scriptures? Yes. Do you approve of the government and discipline of the Bible Presbyterian Church? Yes. Do you promise such subjection to your brethren as is taught in the Word of God? Yes. Have you been induced as far as you know in your heart to seek the office of the holy ministry from the love of God and a sincere desire to promote his glory in the gospel of his son? Yes. Do you promise to be zealous and faithful in maintaining the truths of the gospel and the purity and peace of the church, whatever persecution or opposition may arise under you on that account? Yes. Do you engage to be faithful and diligent in the exercise of all private and personal duties which become you as a Christian and a minister of the gospel, as well as in all relative duties and the public duties of your office, endeavoring to adorn the profession of the gospel by your conversation and walking with exemplary piety before the flock over which God shall make you overseer? Yes. Are you now willing to take charge of God's flock agreeably to your declaration when you accepted the call to the ministry? And do you promise to discharge the duties of a pastor as God will give you strength? Now come on stage and kneel before, kneel down, facing the congregation. Ask now the ordained ministers of the faculty to lay hands on our brother to ordain him into ministry. And I'd like to ask also Reverend Dr. Das Koshi to come and Pray the prayer. Please come, ordain ministers. Please now come. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Almighty God, we call on thy holy name with the strength and help of thy blessed Holy Spirit as we, thy servants, now lay our hands upon our brother Clement Chu as a token of thy calling in his life, firstly to be saved, and then to the ministry of the gospel. We thank thee, Lord, for salvation that you have given to him. As a young man, having known the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Thy servant Clement has grown in faith in the church. And we thank you for the good testimony that he bore by your grace. We are very grateful that we have such a one as Clement in this generation to come to the ministry of the gospel in a time of great spiritual darkness that spread across the face of the earth. 
May thy servant remain faithful to you to expound the truth with clarity and faithfulness and power and to minister the word effectively to the congregation that thou would give to him. And we pray also that his efforts to spread the gospel will bear much fruit, just as we have been exhorted today from the word. We pray that thy servant will be a man of the gospel, that he will be so one with the gospel that the truth, the passion, and the spirit of the gospel will live in him, that he will be a faithful witness of the gospel. Empower him, O Lord, not only today, but all the days of his life by thy Holy Spirit, that he may be a soul winner for thee, that he may minister to thy people, that he may care for the souls with a passion that is undying. Even in his weakness, whether it be physical, emotional, he will rise up in faith, in prayer, and thrust himself forward to care for thy flock. Only thou can equip him for such a work, so we call on you. Our laying of hands is nothing unless you yourself, O oh Lord, come and bless him this time. Truly thou art the one who chooses, and thou art the one who ordains. And we now, with much earnestness of heart, pray also for his dear wife, Sister Yuji. We know she has also a peculiar role to play, now her husband being called and ordained into the ministry. Together we pray they will be exemplary and they will be compassionate and they will be sacrificial, and they will be fruitful. We also pray for the Tabernacle BP Church, where he is ministering now, that the church will be greatly blessed. Under thy servant's pastoral ministry, this church will flourish, and it will be a wonderful testimony in the days to come. Lord Jesus, Thou who died to redeem the body of church. Thou who is now risen and exalted on the right hand of the majesty on high. Thou who standeth as the exalted Lord in the midst of the lampstand. And hold the seven stars, the messengers of the church, in your hand. We plead that you now bless thy servant, Clement Chu. And as we... Lay upon him our hands and pray. All this we ask that Christ may be magnified now and forever through us all and particularly through thy servant in thy church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now the Reverend Tan Kien Singh will give the charge. Clement, you stand before Reverend Tan. Brother Clement Chiu Yiming, on behalf of the ordaining council, I beseech you that you give earnest heed to the word of the living and true God, which declares in 1 Timothy 4, 12 to 16, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith. Give attendance to reading, 
to exaltation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, I charge thee therefore God, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reproof, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Give the time, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Brother Clement Chiu Yiming, as ye seek to make full proof of your ministry, May you endeavour to serve the one living and true God and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by firstly, fervently preaching the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Secondly, faithfully preaching the whole counsel of God, which is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And thirdly, fearlessly defending the truth, which is his, his inspired and inerrant word, to earnestly contend for a faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Brother Clement Chiu Yiming, may you remember Tabernacle Bible Presbyterian Church, which God has called you to nurture with the word of God, and defend the faith and the Far Eastern Bible College, which has established you in a most holy faith and trained you for the sacred ministry of His Word. Do not forget to pray for them and to hasten to their aid in time of need, doing all in accordance to God's will and to the glory of His name. May God help you. Amen. Now we have the Calvary Pandan Choir to sing, Am I a Soldier of the Cross?
encourage our hearts to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ, and to always depend on the Lord. At this time, we shall worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Let us return our tithes and offerings with a grateful heart to the Lord. The ushers, please come forward. We shall sing the hymn in your program sheet, Shine Forth for Jesus Everywhere.
Let us now arise to sing the doxology, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Creator, of all things. Thou art sovereign over all. Thou art God and there is none else. O Lord our God, we rejoice even as we gather here tonight for this graduation service and the ordination of our brother. For Lord God, thou art our gracious heavenly Father. Indeed, the Lord is our shepherd. I, we shall not want. O Lord our God, we thank you for raising FEBC for such a time as this. A time of falling away. A time where the world is in the church. Perilous times. And we thank you, Lord, how you have raised and preserved FEBC for all these 50, 56 years, that it has been steadfast, unmovable, securely fastened on the rock, even our Lord Jesus Christ and His holy, inspired, infallible, inerrant, and perfectly preserved Word. O Lord our God, we thank you for all those who are involved in the FEBC, for the board, for the faculty, for the staff, for the students, for the graduates, and for all those who love the FEBC, both gathered here tonight and even around the world. O oh Lord our God, we thank you for this opportunity to present these gifts and offerings for your work tonight. Lord, we pray that this will be used wisely for the expansion of your kingdom, for your work, and for the glory of your name. O oh Lord, our God, most of all, we thank you for the great love you have given to us, your children, the love that has given to us, our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And indeed, Lord, we pray that you will help us Indeed, that we will be right and true to you, not just in word, in doctrine, but Lord, that we will be true to you in our lives. So Father, we pray that you will help us to live our lives for your glory. For we ask and pray all these things in Christ's most holy and precious name. Amen. Let us now stand up again. <laughs> and let us sing now our closing hymn here. Pass on the torch of God. Rise up, O man of God, give thanks with full and voice. The Lord hath done most valiantly, give thanks, O man, O rejoice. For fifty-six good years, a college he has raised. Beacon of the light 
of God, by Jesus Christ be praised. Our song and waters fail from sundries far and near. We stand in with the truth, the truth, who dead before we fear. Stand fast, F-E-B-C, the better rages on. His strength is equal to the task in Christ the victory's won. Go on and soar in tears for God our strength employ. He is our strength and tower strong. Soon we shall reap joy. Pass on the Our Father in heaven, how wonderful is thy name, and how marvelous are thy works. And indeed, how amazing is this grace that we have in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, without whom we have no hope in this world. But we thank thee because of Christ Jesus, that we can have salvation so rich and so free. And it's because of his name that we are gathered here this day for this graduation service. Oh, how we thank thee for this 43rd graduation service of the Far Eastern Bible College. And we want to pray especially for those who have graduated and now are commencing with the ministry which thou has called them into. As, thou, as they have professed that thou has called them, we ask of thee, O Lord, that you will be most gracious and merciful to them and grant them the much-needed grace to do thy work even in the harvest fields. And how, Lord, we thank thee that you have seen them through all these years of study. They have learned from thy word in the halls of the Far Eastern Bible College. We pray, O Lord, that they will never forget thy word and that in all things that they do, they may always rely upon thee for grace. For thou hast said in thy word, without thee, we can truly do nothing. So help them each step of the way. Strengthen them. May they never depart from the truth and help them, O Lord, in all things to glorify thy name. As for the rest of us, O Lord, we too need thee to keep us in the way. Guard us in this perilous world and help us, Lord, always to remain ever vigilant, ever sober, ever watchful looking forward to the coming of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, living each day for the Word of God and for the testimony of our Saviour. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. <laughs>